Good morning. Today is the beginning of module 16 and today in class we're going to talk about section views. When you log in this morning you will see the day 36 assignment section views and you will be working on this today. This video will serve as a tutorial for how to complete most of this assignment although the last step is completely up to you to complete. Alright so this assignment is based on the uh, PLTW uh, curriculum activity 1.3.6. If you look at this page, you'll see that it is a little bit long and it goes into a lot of detail of why we use section views. So really quick, just to give an explanation, sometimes it's helpful to be able to, to visualize the inside of a model, such as in this example of a 3D model of an apple. We can see that in the section view of the apple, we can see the seeds on the inside. Uh, we can also use section views when it comes to medical technology to view the uh, internal functions of people's bodies. As a more practical uh, application for us, we will be using it to examine a cross-section of the insides of our 3D models. So today in class, we will be working with our screwdriver case, which we created in a previous assignment. If you have not finished the screwdriver case assignment, you need to do that before you complete today's work. All right, so if you open the day 36 assignment, then you will see this Google slide presentation, which will be where you submit your work. It says, today we will create section views of your screwdriver case. Follow the instructions on Schoology and in the tutorial video to finish this task. We need to submit a horizontal section view a vertical section view, the measurements of our case using Onshape, and the last thing that you will have to do is you will need to create a section view for the crank arm 3D model that we worked with in another previous assignment. Again, if you have not done this assignment yet, you will need to do this prior to completing today's task. All right, so let's start in Onshape. So remember, we always access Onshape at myips.onshape.com. So I've got my version of the model pulled up here. I created this in the video that I made for the tutorial. If we look underneath, we can see that it is shelled out, which means that it's not a solid model. So there are two different ways for us to make a section view. The first one is more for a quick reference. So we go over to our view cube over here on the right, and we click on this drop down menu, which gives us a couple of different options that we can change our view. We are going to click on section view. And when we click on section view, we get our little bubble here that pops up, just like we get with a lot of functions in Onshape. And for this first view, I'm going to get a horizontal view, which means if I'm looking at it from the front, I should be seeing it sliced uh, side to side. So to do that, I'm going to click on this face at the top of my model. And I'm going to get this little arrow that shows up here, an arrow with a little angle uh, circle. So I'm going to click on the arrow, and I'm just going to drag this down. And it, as you can see, as I drag it down, I get a slice of what this model looks like at every point horizontally. So I'm going to go to right here because according to the PLTW instructions, that's where they want it. They want it through the cylindrical section of the part. So that is the cylindrical section of the part. So that is our first section view, and you can click on the green checkbox to finish it. Now, it kind of looks like I've changed my model, but I haven't, because I am in section view mode. To get out of section view mode, I can go back up to my drop-down menu at my view cube, and I can turn section view off. All right, so the instructions say that I need a horizontal section view, but I also need a vertical section view. So this is where I will show you the other way to do this. So first, let's use this tool again to see our vertical view. So I'm going to click on section view. I'm going to click the X to get rid of the original section view that we had. And then I'm actually going to click on the right face to get that slice. So there is my vertical section view. But I'm not actually going to use this tool to do that. Instead, I'm going to go down here, press plus, and I'm going to click on create drawing. 
and we're going to use our ATHS standard title block. Click OK. And it's going to ask me what I want to put in my drawing file. I'm going to click on my case model. I'm going to plop this guy right here. And then I'm going to put my isometric view up here. And I'm going to, normally we would put our, um, well, we'll go ahead and put our top view up here. But we would normally put a side view to the right. Instead, we're going to make a section view. So I'm going to click on the section view button here. And you'll notice that I get this little pop-up bubble. Inside this pop-up bubble, I have three options. I have vertical, horizontal, and angular. I'm going to click on vertical here. And I'm going to place it in the dead center of my model. You can see that little triangle pops up when I do that. That's the midpoint symbol. And I get this little arrow thing that shows me that that, that notation means section view. So I'm going to place that here. And now I have a more formally defined section view that doesn't just go away when I continue to change my model. So that is the section view. And if you look on the side there, you can see where the text is actually uh, engraved into the side of the case. So you can use this view to do it in the section view with that drop down menu, or you can make a more formal section view in your multi view drawing. If you were to hand this model over to um, an engineer or to you know a craftsman to create this model, doing this in a multi-view might be a better option. Okay, so we have done our horizontal section view. We've done our vertical section view. The last thing we need to do for our model here is we need to get these case measurements. And we have done this before, but it has been a minute. So we're gonna go back to our model in our part studio. And I'm going to alt click on my part and I'm going to select assign material. And we are going to click on our part to highlight it. Make sure you click it in the menu here. And we are going to search for ABS. ABS is a type of plastic. So find ABS, it should have that density, 0 0.038. And we're going to click the green checkbox to assign it. So now our case is made out of plastic, ABS. We're going to go down here to the bottom right and click on display mass properties. Now when I open this, it's blank. So you will need to click on your part to get the correct measurements. Now. It's really important that you do this for your own model because my measurements are going to be just a little bit different than yours because of the text that we put in the front of our screwdriver case. So please make sure that you go through and you get these numbers that apply specifically to your screwdriver case. The numbers that we want to collect are the mass, volume, and surface area. Make sure that your units are correct. They should be in pounds, cubic inches, and square inches. Okay, so after you've completed these three parts, the last thing is to open your crank arm model and to create a section view. Just a reminder of what the crank arm looks like. The crank arm should look like this. And I have shared this model with everybody in this class, so you should have access to this file. now. It does not say in the assignment what the section view should be. So you can choose whether it makes sense to do a horizontal section view or a vertical section view. If you have any questions, please make sure to send me a message on Schoology or to ask me for help during class. Good luck.